So these are the sacred groves and uh, the, um, the water sources from the sacred groves, various sacred groves, around 22 of them. And then, uh, though water is not used for irrigation, riparian zones are used for riparian gardens, for which water is directly lifted from the river using traditional systems called ukti. They, they are uh, wooden pipes, and at one end of it, a, a heavy stone is tied, at the other end, a bucket is tied, and it's just uh, left into the river. It uh, comes up, and the water comes to the field. It's a, it's a very uh, a basic sort of a structure, but it works well for this region. And uh, around 2,200 families in the Shastri Basin depend on these riparian vegetable gardens, which in turn depend on the river for their, uh, for their water. There's also this zone of tidal influence, which is around, this tidal influence of Shastri comes right till Sangameshwar, which is 50 kilometers from the mouth of the sea. This is all brackish water, but on these brackish water, there are amazing uh, vegetables which are grown on brackish water. The brinjals from this place go to Ratnagiri and they're famed for their taste. And this taste is attributed to the brackish water, to the balance of fresh and saline water, which comes. And around 1,550 households depend on this seasonal farming of vegetables and pulses, which depend on the river for the irrigation. You can see the, uh, the uh, Wooden irrigation, the wooden channels that I was talking about, these are the wooden channels. This is a small vegetable garden. This is the river flowing, and uh, they put the stick here and sort of irrigate their small gardens from here. Freshwater fisheries are also uh, very interesting in the region. Uh, freshwater fish don't come to the market. Only the sea fish come to the market. And freshwater fish are consumed for local uh, uh, consumption. So it's very difficult to you know, actually enumerate them in uh, market figures. How, what is the amount of rupees that the, it, freshwater fish don't have a market price here. But there are very interesting food security issues linked with the river and the freshwater security and the, and the fish. For example, this woman here, uh, the bow she has in hand is full of fish. Uh, 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 this is near Marleshwar, and uh, I was studying the fishing techniques there, and these women were washing clothes, and I was asking them, how do you fish? She said, I'm fishing. She was washing clothes. So I said, how come you're fishing? So she showed me the small bowl she has. It has a bait in it, and it's covered with cloth. And the cloth has a small hole. She puts it in the river bottom. By the time she's done washing, the bowl is full of fish. She can take her uh, fish curry back home, and it's it's very interesting. Single stone, two mangoes. Are yes. <laughs> Not wishy washy. <laughs> so yes. Uh, so yes, it is a living river, and I was very happy to report about it. So uh, we went to Jaigarh, which is the uh, creek of Shastri, and uh, I had a list of fish species, the creek fish species which have disappeared from Vashishti, and I just wanted to tick them off. That. You find them in Shastri and see how important the free-flowing, un unpolluted river is. But uh, I found something very different. And the fishermen there say, the fish cooperatives, which fish in the estuary, say that the fish fall has dropped 70% in last three years. The last year has been especially bad. And this is the creek. This is not the open sea. So what may be happening here? Uh, there are three projects which are coming up here. One is the Jindal power plant. Is a three into 400 megawatts thermal power plant, coal-based thermal power plant, which is at the mouth of, at the mouth of Shasti here. This, this is the Jindal port, which you see. This is the Saugule port yards, which is around 10 kilometers inside the creek. This is Saugule, Saugule port yards, which is supposed to ship around 5 million tons of produce every year when it gets completed. All of this is inside the creek. Creek is supposed to be ecologically the most sensitive part, not only for the river and the riverine fishes, but also for the open sea, because it's a sort of a fish nursery. In crustaceans and even the big fishes lay their eggs, come for laying their eggs into the creek, because there's mangrove, because there's stable water, the temperature variation is very low in the creek as compared to the open sea. There's also little, uh, little disturbance. So this is supposed to be the fish nursery. And uh, there are these three. And there's one more shipyard which is coming around 20 kilometers inside the creek. And what these shipyards are doing, are, uh, they're not set up. This Sawili uh, shipyard is not set up. It will be set up. It will be completed uh, by the beginning of the next year. And what is happening with the fish catch of uh, the fishing villages there? I visited some three fishing villages inside the creek. And this has been that person's catch for the day, three fish. Three fish for a family of five, and they're completely shell-shocked because they've not experienced something like this happening, and they're not coming out, and, and of course, because uh, the relation between the big power plants and the big shipyards is not scientifically established. The, they're also very powerful, so, 
and these these villages were across the creek and they were not never a part of the eia which was taken place which took place there are some interviews if we later if someone's interested we could run through it here we can see that the entire forest and the mangroves have been completely destroyed there is there are no mangroves here the entire mountain uh, for around one and a half kilometers is completely deforested and completely destroyed and uh, they have a jetty the jetty will be around 2 kilometers this is one of the shipyards there are two more such coming uh, this is the jetty which will run which will be uh, formed by reclaiming the creek and it will run for 2 kilometers and uh, concessional agreements have been signed with the port trust for a, for the next 50 years for all of these ports for next 50 years they are permitted to operate there and further the the contracts will be signed again so uh, the jindal uh, port is supposed to handle around 20 million uh, cargo every year the sagule port is supposed to handle 5 million tons of cargo every year so we can only imagine what will happen to the creek ecology and what will happen to the villages which are right across the creek if this actually starts operating which it will and what will happen to the river because uh, the cargo here it's very interesting to see the report of sagule ports and infrastructure they say that a cargo for jindal the cargo is coal because they need the coal for their thermal power plant but for sagule they say that the region is bauxite rich and they also envisage uh, uh, export and import of bauxite so it's it's clear that there'll be bauxite mining mines which will, which are also going to come some day or the other and we all know what mines do to rivers the example of goa uh for these uh, ports uh, this dredging been going on uh, 10 to 12 kilometers inside the creek and this dredging is to the depth of 14 meters there's permitted to dredge till 14 meters there's no monitoring on how the dredging is going on who knows what's the dredging which goes on but they're permitted to dredge for 14 meters now this dredging of a creek or an of an estuary completely destroys its ecosystem because this is the uh, alluvial layer where the crustaceans and the fish have laid their eggs and their larval stages especially of the crustaceans are developed in the mangroves and the silt and 14 meters of this is being taken out so this is the sort of uh, on a on a google map this is uh, jaigarh this is going to be the jaigarh bay this is the saugule uh, port there's one port again inside and this is the jaigarh port this is the shastri creek and this is the open sea Incidentally, Jaigarh is just around 50 kilometers from Jaitapur. So, what are these thermal power stations and uh, plants doing to the water supply and the water security of the region? We said, we j- I just said some time back that the water security is very strong. Depends on the groundwater and the lateritic plateaus of the region. Uh, in Jaigarh village, a population of around 1,500 has been supplied by tankers, and this has never happened in Jaigarh. What's happening? The TDS has risen sharply to around. 1400 mg per liter and it has been said that tds has been rising because of the ash ponds and the flash which has been deposited on the lateritic plateaus and which is settled there by using sea water and this fly ash and it is lined with polythene but we don't know what's the what happens to the, because this sort of tds had never happened in the region before and uh, well one of the reasons is uh, the so so the jindal power plant is actually supplying the region with tankers and there are tanker quarrels and stuff which the people were never ex- had never experienced before because they had their water security in their houses nearly each and every house or pada in konkan has its own well so this tanker thing is very new it's the western western maharashtra phenomena What doesn't total dissolved solids total dissolved solids it's also um it depends how much time do i have I'll just I'll just wind it up then. So uh, so unfortunately, a living river turned out to be a dying river again. And uh, well, so uh, when the whole thing does start operating, jin, the jan, the Jindal thermal power plant is actually now operating at 1,200 megawatts. But when the ports also start operating at 20 million tons and 5 million tons, what will be? Uh, will we be moving towards economic development, or will we be moving towards ecological disaster? And what will happen to the fishing villages? which were not covered by the eia so um i i'll skip this part national we all know what ri- river na- uh, so we've seen dying rivers and then there's this uh, 
so we also need to think of river revival. There are some excellent examples of river revival in Maharashtra also. You should also take a look at them. We all know about National River Conservation Plan and how much has been actually spent and what's been done out of it. Uh, very interestingly, the uh, Maharashtra Economic Survey claims that under the Nav National River Action Plan, Trambakeshwar, Nasik, Nanded, Karad and Sangli cities, uh, the cleaning of rivers has been completely successful. There can't be a more understatement, blatant understatement than this one. Just has to visit the rivers to see what the state of the rivers is right now. 